So to get started with Elasticsearch, you are going to need to go ahead and install it. Luckily enough, Elasticsearch make this really easy to do. So there's no complicated setup. It's really, really straightforward. A couple of things before we start, we're going to need to test our Elasticsearch installation once we have installed it and we have a node up and running. Now I'm using Postman, which is a Chrome extension. It's You can find it in the Chrome Web Store. And this basically allows me to send um, requests to a server. It's basically just a REST client. So you can use curl for this if you want to on the command line. But I'm going to be using Postman just because it's a little bit more visual, easier to do, and uh, for beginners works perfectly. So to install Elasticsearch, you're going to hit the download button on elasticsearch.org. And we have a couple of options here. If you're setting this up on a server, maybe an Ubuntu server, you might want to go for the Debian package. Um, but for Windows or for um, OS X, you're going to just hit the zip file download. And we're going to look at another way to install this in just a moment. So you don't have to do it this way. Uh, so before you go ahead and jump and do things, if you're using, uh, using OS X, we're going to use Homebrew, which is going to be much, straight, much uh, easier. So when, once you've hit download zip, I've actually stored this um, within my home directory. You can see I've got a folder here called Elasticsearch. So if we just do a um, uh, just do a CD over to Elasticsearch, in here you'll find things like the license, notices, stuff like that. But we're not really interested in this. We're interested in the binary directory. So let's CD over to that. And inside of here, we've got several different things. We've got plugin, which allows us to install plugins. More importantly, we've got Elasticsearch, which we can just run to, to basically create our uh, or start up our Elasticsearch node. Now, inside Postman at the moment, um, uh, Elasticsearch, by the way, runs on port 9200 on, on localhost, um, obviously, if you're just using it on your local machine. So when I send a GET request to this, it will say that there's no response, obviously, because we're not running a server. But if we go ahead and, and start Elasticsearch, you'll see something like this. It does look a little bit messy, it's not very readable, but this basically means that now you have an Elasticsearch node running. So if we head over to our REST client or we use something like curl and we send a GET request to that, we now see things like the status, which is 200 OK, uh, the name uh, of, the, of the node running, the version number, and various other different pieces of information. But you now know that you've got Elasticsearch running and you can send post requests to store indexes and types, things like that. We're not going to be looking at that in this video, but uh, you know that that works. So now that we've got a node up and running, perfect, that's it. We've pretty much got ready to go. This wouldn't be for a production environment, but for testing on your local machine, it's enough just to play around with it. So let's uh, come out of this. And now let's look at another way we might want to install it. And this is really only if you're using OS X. So if you aren't, then you may want to drop off the video at this point. So Homebrew is a missing package manager, as they say, for OS X. And it's really, really useful for just installing packages that you can using Homebrew. So we're just going to do brew, install, Elasticsearch, and there we go. So it downloads the package that uh, that we need to install. We're, we're working with 1.2.1 here and um, gives you a bit of information. So it tells you where the data is stored. It tells you where the logs are stored. It tells you where your plugins are stored. And it also gives you the location of the Elasticsearch uh, installation folder. So if we do a CD over to this, you can see we've got the bin directory as we normally would. That's all in there for us. We can run Elasticsearch. We can do whatever we want. And in this case, we don't have the Windows versions because uh, obviously we're on OS X. So we've also got um, a, a command to reload Elasticsearch after an, uh, after an upgrade. So you can unload Elasticsearch like this. Bear in mind, at the moment, we're not actually running a node from the terminal. However, when we send a request to the server, we actually get this back. It's running as a process. So if we want to unload it, we can run this command here. So we just run this. Then we head over to here, hit send, and there we go. We can't get a response. When we want to load it back up again, we use this command here. We just paste that in and head over to Postman, hit send, and there we go. So what we can actually do is, obviously, you're not always going to have this up. So you're not always going to have this information up. So say, for example, 
you, you think, oh, where's my Elasticsearch installation? Brew gives you this info feature so you can say, well, I want the information about Elasticsearch and it will basically just give you all of that information again. So if you are running this on your machine, you have your uh, unload and load commands, you have um, where everything's stored um, and the obviously the location of the installation. So there's a couple of ways we can install Elasticsearch. As I've mentioned, it's extremely easy to just download whatever operating system you're using and just running it. So you can see here that it pretty much gives you instructions. So on Unix, you'd run bin, which would, or binary Elasticsearch, and on Windows, you'd run Elasticsearch.bat from your command line. So there we go, really, really easy to get started with. And once you've done that, you can start playing around with Elasticsearch.